Okay, here's the deal. I'm lucky to be a gaming journalist, and thanks to my job, I receive a ton of free games. In fact, I hardly buy games for myself these days. But that wasn't the case back when I was small and just starting out. You see, as a kid with a limited allowance and virtually no income, I could not buy a lot of games. Hence, when it did come to buying games, I stuck with the safe options. And by safe options, I mean AAA titles. And this attitude kind of stuck with me through the years. Apart from a couple of insanely popular indie titles like Abzu, Firewatch and Nekopora. Hey, stop judging me. I'm a cat girl enthusiast with the same passions as the CEO of Tesla and SpaceX. Anyway, coming back to the topic. I never paid heed to the indie games as a kid. Back then, my limitation was money. And now, supposing I wasn't a gaming journalist whose job is to play games, my limitation would be time. So once again, like most people out there, I would have stuck with hypermarketed AAA games. Just after scratching the surface, I found that this is quite a relatable problem. When you're young and have time to play games, you don't have money. And when you're old and have got all the cash, then you ain't got the time. The only exception is that rich kid on the block whose mom bought him like all the new titles as soon as they dropped. And the unemployed Jack, who lives in the corner of the street. I don't even know how he gets the money to play the games. This problem does not lack at the end of financial or timely means, but extends to the fact that indie studios and their titles don't have the marketing budget to go head on against AAA studios. This makes it even harder to find and play indie games as an individual. But this holiday season, I came across a deal from Microsoft. Three months of Game Pass Ultimate to new users for just $1. There wasn't any particular game that I was looking forward to playing, but the lowly price got me hooked. And voila, that was when I found a huge selection of indie games that immediately got me hooked. Unless you were a part of an indie cult, you'd miss out on a ton of ambitious indie titles due to limited marketing budgets. But Xbox Game Pass, it's a lifeline, nay, a messiah for the indie games. One such game that I found on Game Pass was Astrologaster, a story-driven astrological comedy set in Shakespeare's London. Uh, it's a flip-up storybook where you play as Simon Foreman, a medical practitioner with, with let's just say, occult methods. Foreman consults Star for medical diagnosis and, well, not just medical diagnosis, but also financial advice, mental discord, future, and even neighbor trouble. And it turns out that the game is based on a true and truly ridiculous story. One of the achievements in the games is called Coitus Past Consultation, which is gained when Foreman flirts with one of his querents by saying, <clears throat> Would you like to see my collection of Venetian glassware? Imagine if that one worked in real life. Anyway, coming back to the point, Microsoft has done an amazing job serving you the best indie titles that you wouldn't have previously heard about. It's a win-win for all the parties involved. Developers publishing their games on Xbox Game Pass will have to pay nothing to get their games noticed by thousands and millions of players. Microsoft is spending the money for them, though Microsoft is promoting the service and the games are a part of the service. So technically Microsoft is promoting your game for you. For players like you and me, we get to experience absolutely stunning indie games at seemingly no extra cost. I for one bought Xbox Game Pass for AAA games, but I'm gonna stick for the indie titles. I only have got a PC, but if you have an Xbox console, it's even better value for money since you have an access to an even wider variety of games. For Microsoft, more games means a wider catalog. A wider catalog means more players and hence more money. The trade agreement between Microsoft and devs is a private affair. But if I had to take a guess, it can be only one of two situations. Either A, Microsoft buys all the rights for the game up front, something like Netflix, and distributes it on its own network and eats all the profit. Or either B, the developers get pennies on the dollar for every download or whenever a goal is met. Or C, a mix of the above two. Although, 
the last setup is quite unlikely. I can't wait to see what the future of Game Pass holds, and at the same time I hope other game subscription services such as Stadia and PlayStation Now improve with the upcoming years to promote the art of indie games.